it was very difficult because India for a very long time felt that a dog trainer is like a dog trainer. Stop at the gate, give him the dog, he'll go do miracles and come back and tomorrow your dog's going to obey you. That has never happened, it will never happen. A dog will only obey the person who trains. And if you want your dog to obey you, you should train your dog. A behaviorist or a psychologist or a trainer will be, it's, we call them as the easy couch trainer. So I'm going to sit back, you and your dog do everything, I'll tell you how to do it. You do it, your dog obeys you. I do it, your dog obeys me. Correct. Now what do you want? You want the dog to obey the trainer or the owner. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Lalit Dano Show. Today I have with me a very esteemed guest who is a dog expert. He is known as Dog Guru Amrut and anybody who has a pet dog in Bangalore would have definitely come across his name. He also has his own canine training school where he's trained over thousands of dogs. Over his last decade of experience in this industry, he has had the benefit of training a lot of dogs in the police department in Bangalore. This individual is also a TEDx speaker and has trained many more trainers to become amazing dog experts and psychologists. Today's episode will be one such amazing insightful episode for everybody who loves dogs. Watch the entire episode and do let me know what you feel about it. Hello Amrut, uh, welcome to my show and I'm so happy that you're here because I remember the first time I saw you it was in 2017 when you were giving your TED talk and I was so fascinated as you had a shepherd by your side and you were doing a live demo and I was completely awestruck simply because I had two dogs back at home at that time. Welcome to my show and it's an honor and pleasure to have you here. Thank you Lalit, honor is mine. So everybody knows you uh, that you are known as Dog Guru Amrut. And throughout this podcast, I want to understand how this dog guru tag came along and how you unfolded the whole story. So where did your passion towards animals start, uh, Amrut? Uh, I luckily was an extremely mischievous child. So uh, I spent a lot of, uh, uh, to be more specific, I was the outstanding child. Okay. So I stood uh, outside the class most of the <laughs> most of the hours during the day. So during that, the best friends I could make were dogs. And uh, they were the ones who could give a very good hearing and no speaking. Mm. So that's, that's also turned me out to be a speaker today because I always had uh, the listeners with me. I was somewhere attracted to dogs, whether it was the Indies, the street dogs, whoever, wherever. So I still remember in my class two or three, if I had to go to a summer camp also, my mother used to go and check if there are no dogs in and around that place because she knew I wouldn't concentrate on what's happening in the summer camp. I'd be more bothered about the dog who's in the neighborhood. So that was always there. Probably I was born with it. It was always clear yes, and you yes. knew it. I knew that I loved them. I okay. didn't know that I could ever be do anything for when them. When did that happen? Uh, I, for pocket money, I started selling puppies in 7th, uh, 8th standard. That gave me a lot of money. So those days, mobiles were still not there. So uh, hospitals in and around veterinary hospitals, uh, they used to put photos in their phone number, landline number, stating that this is there. Parents were a part of Rotary and Lions and all that. So every meeting we used to go to, I used to tell, you want Nimung Nai Beka, you need a dog, you need a puppy, then I know where it's available. So I used to go pick up one, give it. Exchange could uh, lead into either profit with kind or cash and things like that. So it was more that I wanted to do something with them. So that was always there. Uh, I somehow was pushed through engineering. Uh, <laughs> I came out as an engineer, but then it was a miracle. But then I was still breeding, showing dogs, importing dogs, exporting dogs in the show game. And my brother came down from the US. He, was, he did his uh, engineering MS and all that. So he's like, there is something more in depth in the dog industry other than buying, selling. So that's merchandising or trading. You don't know what dogs are. So why don't you educate yourself is when this thing came up. Checked with the US, checked with the different parts of the country. Till today, even now in Asia, we don't have anything that's canine studies. So nothing related to that. So, and I was only specific to dogs. Nothing with cats, nothing with cows. Any absolutely other animal. nothing. Hmm. Yes, I have cows. I have birds who listen to me today with the same principles I've been trying on them. Uh, turtles, that's legal and things like that. But otherwise... Only particular canine studies was in US where they wanted me to do 
bachelors of canine then masters in canine and then get into psychology where in new zealand it became a it was a comic thing for them like somebody from india forget asia somebody from india wants to come and study dog psychology how is it even possible do you people even know that dogs have psychology sort of <laughs> that became a challenge for me I'd like yeah and they even then in 2008 and 9 felt that uh, one of my assignment we had a practicals it was raining new zealand has uh, the european weather it's like uh, four seasons in a day it's raining it's sunny it's snow it's raining it's correct, cold correct. sunny so somebody went then my classmates were doing practicals it was raining and the moment i picked up the chit to do my fix my dog and go there check my dog rain stopped so i could i did hear my uh, in the trainers or invigilators or whoever was my judges there for the exam talk about oh he must have called in india and they have thrown some snakes into the fire and that stopped the rain so <laughs> 2008 and 9 people still in europe in new zealand europeans thought that indians are snake catchers and white pipers you know things like that so they gave me a conditional visa for a month they're like come prove yourself then we'll give you an admission it i thought they were checking me with the docs they were checking my integrity because the course i passed gets 3 lakh applications 30 admissions on the wow. globe 12 to 10 to 12 people who pass out where was this like what's new zealand the auckland it's called unitech okay uh, animal sciences department because the moment you pass the course uh, you you have a free entry to any pacific island samoa fiji australia new zealand to get into the police department for the dog squad so the okay. either the military the police the airports so i'm so assuming it, i'm assuming it's very elite like the program itself is one of the best and the most elite programs out there yes it's one of the elite or the best across the globe Okay. So they they're very stress specific. It's into canine and their thinking and their evolution and their working. So they're very particular. I'm blessed with good tutors there. So the they wanted to know if I could do the course and get into the Australian police or the New Zealand police and be a okay. corrupt person. For them, Salations and Indians are people who cheat and people who do <laughs> pujas and things. So that was what they wanted to t- uh, test. And luckily, I got through the course and I turned out to be the topper of the course. Wow! The only Asian uh, who did it then. now few others in different countries have probably done it and uh, not in india though so and i topped the course so I have one question while you were doing this course you knew that you had an inherent passion towards this because no, i didn't i i just wanted to do it because i wanted th- see in, in, when we went to school a lot of people told you know be prepared for the next class ha, ha, understand ha. what they going to do look at your syllabus what they could teach tomorrow go through it so that you get nothing which was done this was done there all the questions i had about dogs and all the questions today when i'm taking a class for veterinary pg not post-grad. doctors pg post grad jo mvsc when i'm giving them a, a, a seminar or i'm giving them a lecture they have questions on dogs that is not there in the indian syllabus correct so correct. today veterinary doctors are passing out without knowing lot about dogs in particular about dogs so these questions so i went back to doctor they didn't know breeders didn't know so these questions in me wanted me i wanted answers for it super that's super. what helped me with the course so so it was started with passion then a, a lot of curiosity and questions Very and true. now that became what you became a topper so what after that sir like did you decide that you want to work there or did you immediately come back how did the journey I, progress before i even finished my course i got an australian job offer with the police okay. because we were there doing practicals together Correct. so they wanted me on board uh, that uh, gave me another 6 years that i have to stay there and not come back oh. so i checked with my father he told me two things one like the 80s 90s children he is like see neither do you have a sister to get married nor are you funding your brother's education nor are your parents sick that you need to fund their operations or medical history so these were the three four basic things why a lot of bangaloreans or people from ba- india went abroad and got settled there for their jobs he like however long you are there you are one among you are one foreigner in that country whether you are a police you are whoever but here you will be the only one so i think i can still afford another years of your food and clothing come back <laughs> if you are successful here good if not you can go back any time makes sense because there my offer is that i can go back any time give them a five year contract that i'll not go back so i get my pr i get my police job and i so you can also say that today a good ecosystem around you helped you made the right choice towards your passion and your curiosity very much very much and i think it's important for today's kids especially if they're 16 17 18 19 to experiment test it out and understand what fits them right very true in fact uh, my youngest uh, student her name is shasna she is in her 7th she's done kennel breeding management course she's done her uh, obedience course to train a dog for obedience and all this started during covid so online i've not met her okay. and uh, she 
I can call her the puppy guru because she's got a Rottweiler completely obedience trained with online session. She's done her kennel breeding management. She's done her detection protection. She at uh, 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 seven standard girl today knows the formulas of uh, cocaine, LSD, heroin. She knows how to train a dog to identify them. And any dog of any age can be trained for any task. She's learned it online. Her practicals are yet to do. So yes, I'm so happy that we have been able to help people out, wow. take it up in the right way. There are a lot of people who are earning. If, if you Google pet business in India, it's you, the numbers go outside your calculator or your system. But then educated pet business, when it comes to why am I Very selling, minimal. what am I selling, how is it going to benefit all the platforms and the sale? That's something people do not know. So yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. And before we get back to our story, a couple of questions are popping in my head. Now, I've been a dog owner and I've been severely wrong a lot of times, especially with its diet or let's say the kind of dog I have to bring home. Today, you are seeing huskies just pop up like uh, just another normal uh, dog that is there every everywhere around. And and as you understand these dogs much better, you re you'll realize actually what, what's happening in the pet industry is also not a very good thing. What's your take on that? What do you feel? feel about the whole knowledge about having dogs because everybody's crazy about them everybody wants a picture with them but nobody knows the in and out so if you can give me three things that you have to think about before going and buying a dog what would it be can i afford it physically can i afford it socially last comes financially because today we've got 300 plus breeds you have enough money in your pocket what you can afford Physically, socially is what matters. What I mean by physically, a beagle. Beagle is probably the worst dog you can have in an apartment. But beagles are all over apartments. Beagles need at least six to seven hours of running a day without which they're going to howl, they're going to be destructive, they're going to tear, da, 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 da. they're the hound group dogs. Whereas people just jump into it. Or because they're hound, small. They're small. Smaller dogs need more exercise than bigger dogs. Where if you want an apartment wow. dog, there are other smaller breeds, yes, who do not need much of exercise. So the origin it took thousands of years for a wolf to become a dog of different color, different shape, different size. And each one had an objective. So Correct. you can educate yourself on the objective, understand that, can I afford him? What do I mean by social affordability? If physical is the amount of exercise you can give, where you stay, apartment, independent house, who's going to be in your house? And social affordability, can I take him out for walks? If not me, who will? In my apartment complex, how many other dogs are there? Tomorrow, if I don't come back in time, who's going to feed? Can I do, there's a boarding center close by. Can I make friends with other pet owners? Would they take care of it? Or if they're, they're, my neighbor has a male dog, and if I go for another male dog, what's going to happen? You know, this one, a beagle starts, bahoo, and then the other five dogs in your lane starts crying because they are barkers, they're not criers. They don't howl, but then because of him, they're doing it. Hmm. It is his bark that sounds like a howl. And then the 10th house from here, there's a husky. So he'll start howling again and a death in the in somebody's house there, they'll start blaming your dog. And then there's a concern that because six years, our dogs were comfortable. Now you got a beagle, he started barking. That turned to be a howl. And then because, of, so there is so much of confusion. So educate yourself. You've got enough and more people today to educate you, understand whether physically, socially, I can afford a dog, then get to the finance part. Otherwise, there are a lot of people who end up after they, I do a session with them and they understand they want to go an indie. Go for an indie. And in an indie, it's again, oh, I'm adopting a dog, I'm giving him a lie. Da, da, da. What age are you going to be getting him from? Where are you getting him from? Because tomorrow you end up with a concern. The bad mouthing happens to the whole indie vicinity. Dog. All indies are not aggressive. All indies are not possessive. All indies are not very anxious. So where are you going to pick up one? Giving life to India is different. Indian breeds are different. Correct. Now Indian breeds, we have Chippi Parai, we have Kombai, we have Kanni, we have uh, Mudol, we have Mudol, Rajapalyam. Yeah. There's so many of them. Right? The, so just people think India is not just India. There are a lot, lot more other things. That correct. Happen. Correct. M makes a lot of sense. And today, a lot of owners who are actually educated pref actually prefer the indie breeds because they're actually... They they're meant to be here, right? And it's much easier to take care of them and their, their immunity levels are strong. So now a very quick question. If I'm getting into an apartment of let's say 1,500, 2,000 square feet and I want to be a dog owner for the first time, now, what, what kind of dog would you suggest or what would you suggest? Yes, of course, check the three parameters financially, socially and uh, First question that. would be small, medium, large. What size of a dog do you want? Can I keep even a large dog in an apartment? Very much. 
Okay. You will be you will be most happiest if you end up with a mastiff, preferably an English mastiff or a French mastiff. English could be male or female, matters less. French, it's also called the Dorjidi Bordio, which could be a female, uh, not a bull for an apartment. These two, or if you want to go for a Bernard, a Saint Bernard, who's got a smooth coat or a velvet coat, not the hairy ones. So one among these three, as far as they are with the mother till they are two, two and a half, three months because they're boning, we don't want them in a tail marble floor. And then they bring it to your apartment. You'll have the best of 10, 12 years of your life. One, wow. they don't need more of exercise. They are tired by the time they go out of your apartment. One, <laughs> you don't, you, because people can't, don't afford time and energy to give exercise. Second, they will bark once or maximum twice. So it's a boo, hoo, that's it. Third bark will not come. They're tired. <laughs> Four, they're going to lie in a small corner of your house, could be your, uh, below your bed below your, or on your couch. They're going to be as big as your couch or probably in your balcony. Any big dog like a Mastiff do not need more exercise. Of 10, 15, 12 minute walk a day is enough for them. Wow. And people end up, that's a big huge breed. That's a giant breed, gentle giants. Anybody in your apartment can come and sit on your dog. The dog will allow them to sit if they're children. They understand that. In fact, a lot of people do not know in the Mysore Maharaja's palace today, they have a section where only the VVIPs are allowed. And they have leopards and tigers and gaurs that they had hunted those days. They stuffed and kept it for them, for their thing those days. They have an English Mastiff stuffed there. That's the only dog in our Karnataka, Mysore Maharaja's palace, stuffed English Mastiff that was gifted to him by a Britisher. So he, the love that they had amongst all the other dogs they're there. And going back to uh, the Europe, all big mansions, the oldest ones, they have English Mastiff which lived there carved in stone for their memory that's kept. So, nice. so these big dogs can be beautiful dogs pets with you. They don't need more excite, they don't bark much, they don't howl, they don't, they can't even hold you and hump like how other male dogs do because they this way 80, 85 kilos. <laughs> so they can't do it. So you have absolutely no problem. Wow. So you want to go to medium sized dogs, then you have your golden retrievers, your Labradors. Yeah, that's the two you can get to a medium breed. A smaller one? Smaller ones, if you want the hairy ones, then you've got the... Sh Maltese would be the best. Mm -hmm. uh, Shih Tzu the second, because Shih Tzus can get a little cranky. Uh, the ones without hair, miniature pinchers are the best dogs you can have. And the best part of the most of these dogs, miniature pinchers or Maltese, they live 15, 18 years. Or Dash Hounds, they're mm -hmm. even better. Dash Hounds are great dogs, looking at the cost perspective. Min miniature pinchers are called the fathers of Doberman. They look just like a Doberman, small Smaller, dog, yeah. extremely intelligent. They would bark anybody come to any apartment in your, any flat in your apartment. Uh -huh. But only you will hear. <laughs> That's important. <laughs> yeah. They are very assertive. They are very confident. They will bark. If a leaf falls down, they are going to bark. But only you can hear. Your neighbor is not disturbed. Yeah. They are small dogs. You feed less. Carry them where you want to. I don't think any minpin goes to a... Very seldom a minpin would go to a doctor for treatment. Otherwise, it's they're normally healthy. Until Super unless healthy. They have a breed, breed uh, interbreeding, inbreeding. And Some genetics. Like uh, Otherwise, it's only a vaccination and nothing S else that they need. Wow. Wow. I think that's a lot of insight. Now, seeing it from your perspective, I personally feel uh, people should really start consulting experts, you know, before making these decisions and without which you're just going to make blind, stupid decisions based on the look of the dog. Oh, I saw it in a movie and I'm going to go buy it. So getting back, we'll go back quickly to your story. Now you finished your uh, course in New Zealand. You came back to India. And how did you start? Like, how did you start getting into the profession of it? Who are your first few clients and who have you helped throughout your journey? Uh, it was very difficult because India for a very long time, felt that a dog trainer is like a dog trainer. Stop at the gate, give him the dog, he'll go do miracles and come back and tomorrow your dog's going to obey you. That has never happened. It'll never happen. A dog will only obey the person who trains. And if you want your dog to obey you, you should train your dog. A behavioralist or a psychologist or a trainer will be, it's, we call them as the easy couch trainer. So I'm going to sit back. You and your dog do everything. I'll tell you how to do it. You do it. Your dog obeys you. I do it. Your dog obeys me. Correct. Now, what do you want? You want the dog to obey the trainer or the owner. Right? So, this to come out of that took a lot of time. And second, they never understood that dog training as a profession and behaviorism that is behaviorist for a dog. And being the only one in India who is certified. So, after me, yes, today there are 100 more followers. I have certified a lot of people to do the needful. I have trained them and given them certificates. So, 
Again, the course which I do, I would want to get a more, lot more practical. It would take 8-10 months for them to be a behaviorist compared to a lot of other courses that happen today. There's an online thing where you sit, <laughs> attend 15 hours of session. There, it's not even interactive. So it's, you the sit down, you play. Yeah, as far as, or even you, you don't know even if you're not behind the screen. You play it for 15 hours, then a certificate comes to you over an email. So you're a behaviorist sort of it. So. That things happen, that there's a good and bad of every part of it. But then yes, educating yourself before you do something, that's important. So for me, I had my first few clients. One was Mr. Joby, he had a dog somewhere in Hinur Banaswadi. I live in Baswanguri. So I used, I had one of my doctors, I used to carry it in the car, go there, use my dog and train their dog, train them with the dog. And then I had another gentleman called Karthik in Arar Nagar. They had a retriever called Cindy. So that was probably my second client. They all are still in touch with me. So then I still didn't have my setup. I didn't have the dog school and the kennel and the training center, the facility, which yesterday. Then probably in a year's time, we built it up. It took a year for us to come up with it. Since then, uh, the good part of the training center that I have is that more than 800 of dogs who came to me that they are, they've killed children, killed owners, killed neighbors, killed the neighbor's dog. Da, da, da. So they came like the man-eater dogs. So these dogs, rather than being put down, euthanizing them, I've been able to use a little bit of the information knowledge that I gathered with my experience and my studies that they are living. They are living and they are living comfortably. No attacks, no growling, no barking. And I would give maximum credit to the owners because they put an effort. Mm. It's only the owner who has to put an effort. We are only a knowledge experience changing. So we'll give you the information with our knowledge. You have to, you go to a doctor, he'll give you prescription of medicine. You have to take the medicine. You can't tell that I had a surgery, I paid you 3 lakh rupees for a surgery, tomorrow I need to run after knee replacement. You can't. Okay. You need to do physiotherapy, you need to slowly start walking, crawling and then you get to a running stage, right? True. So, no, no, I went to the biggest of hospitals, the best doctor <laughs> did the surgery and I'm yet not able to run. Impatience will never help. And the biggest challenge, probably I didn't wait for the question, the biggest challenge for me in my profession is training the owners, the humans and not the dogs. <laughs> I'm sure because I've spoken to a few other friends who are in the same profession and that's what they say, you know, no matter how good I am or how good the dog is, if the owner doesn't practice what has been told, it's the same. And I can, I can also vouch for this because I train children. A lot of time if the parent doesn't build the right ecosystem for whatever I've trained, be it personality development or communication skills, there is no way that they can actually start putting that down and start seeing the true benefits of it. Um, so, Amrut, I want to ask you this. It sounds very inspiring to see somebody do something so offbeat because usually if you're studying engineering, you had to become an engineer, but you've created your own niche. You've created your own aura and brand today. What would you tell, let's say an 18 year old person who loves dogs, who wants to do, who wants to build a career with dogs? What should the next few things be? Right now, I'm about to get into my first year degree. What do I do? I would suggest them that since in the canine industry we do not have a professional course which uh, with a lot of my effort we would be coming with it very soon in this country so that at least all the Asians in the continent can come and learn from that. We have courses for them but I would suggest they take up BSc science because whatever psychology I'm talking about the science background is going to help them and being a graduate is very important today in this country for any sort of a profession or uh, thing. So, till we come up with a bachelor's degree with canine studies, so do your B BSc, preferably CBZ, and with that do the canine studies. So, you graduate, you have a graduation because more than anything, I don't know about the other apps, your matrimonial app, first thing would be a graduate tick, <laughs> right? So, you need to get married, you need that. So, education is important. I would be able to help them out to either become a, the best boarding center. You don't even have to breed. You want to be the best breeding center. Because normally all the courses today, I'm afraid uh, even the trainer training courses other than mine across the country, you have a lot of them who train people to be trainers. They only teach you dog training. Hmm. And you come out of it, you don't know how to sell yourself. The dog is not going to pay you money. It's the owner who's going to pay you money. So I would be teaching them what is canine business studies. Correct. How do you sell your service? What is ethical training? What you do with the dog is between you and the dog or with you and the owner. So how do you market yourself? What is veterinary nursing? You're training a dog, you're a great trainer. Tomorrow your dog gets a sunstroke, what do you do? Tomorrow your dog hangs them, so they are on a choke chain and they jump down and they're breathless, what do you do? A bee stings a dog that you're training. 
you are there in front of them you are a professional trainer you may be greatest of the trainers there's an allergy the the face is swollen up from here like this in the next two minutes what do you do yes take him to the doctor is it ethical for us to do injections for dogs no it is not it is not in the in the law but the constitution also says it is right for you nobody can stop you from saving the dog's life so as a person in that profession if you know a basic you talk to a doctor doctor is like give him an injection in the muzzle of avil right now bring him to the hospital it'll take you 20 minutes of travel so you as a pet professional should know what to do how to do it so that's what i train them on wow i also tell them this is that does not give you a license to go vaccinating dogs mm. that's not legal or ethical but Correct. what's legal ethical for you is to help the doctor survive till it goes to the doctor Correct. If the doctor tells you, please give this injection in the skin, you should know how to. That's as much. So you're not going to be a pet practitioner to give medicine, but you should know your basic first aid if you are a trained professional. Okay. So same thing with your breeders. Everybody are breeders. Now, midnight, your dog is whelping. Six puppies come out, the other four is st st stuck in the stomach. How many doctors would welcome you in the uh, clinics midnight, four o'clock? How many of them are open? How many are close to you? So if you want to build up a kennel, first and foremost, I would try to select a place that's got three veterinary hospitals around that are 24-7 working. Because in your kennel, it could be somebody else's dog, it could be your dog, anything that happens, how fast could you reach there? Rather than how big your property is. Hmm. So these things, we teach architecture of kennel. What do you need in a kennel? Wow. So if you're a breeder, there are a lot of breeders. Sir, I'm a, I'm a Rottweiler breeder. I have the best champions hai. सर रॉटवीलर को रॉटवीलर नाम कैसे आया दे डोंट नो वो किसी ने रखा होगा जैसे हम टाइगर रूबी बुलाते हैं वो रॉटवीलर बुला दिया वो रॉटवीलर हो गया तो इफ यू डू नॉट नो द ओरिजिन ऑफ द ब्रीड देन डोंट ब्रीड इट बिकॉज यू आर सेलिंग इट टू पीपल हु डो नॉट नो इट करेक्ट यू आर गिविंग लाइफ मेटिंग टू डॉग्स ब्रिंगिंग आउट बर्थ गिविंग इट गेटिंग मनी टुमारो व्हाट अबाउट द नेक्स्ट 12 इयर्स नीदर दोस पीपल नो व्हाट इज हैपनिंग नॉ डिड यू नो हु यू आर गिविंग व्हाट यू आर गिविंग सो educate yourself as breeders educate yourself as boarding training centers grooming parlors find out what the dog needs what you're going to do Super. i'm not a groomer but then people who are good at grooming they need a lot more other things like nursing could be understanding the pet could be their business studies how you going to market yourself and all this so so if you the same question just to summarize one line can you give me five trending professions in the dog world which are next to be the next big thing or something that people can look at uh, just the names of the profession e-commerce pet products groomers breeders boarding or pet sitters and the last ones are your veterinarians super and the dog industry. so these are the five basics that you can get into and you can start niching it out as you go today i'm seeing a lot of dog chefs who you know cooking meals for dogs i don't know how viable they are but you know they come at their own price but now moving on sir like one last thing apart from your career professional challenges what is that one significant big challenge that you faced as amrut in this journey what is that what is the biggest challenge and how did you overcome it because it's a challenge i've yet not overcome it but like i told you earlier it is making people understand uh, to come out of the myth that my dog would obey me just because i'm the owner no your dog will obey you if you're a pack leader and to be a leader you should have leadership qualities leadership qualities does not come by hitting scolding shouting being aggressive you need to be assertive you need to be calm and yet show that i am the pack leader so respect the animal trust the animal then you gain respect out of the animal so you they surrender what is come sit down rest floor sleep all this why is it done it is to tell the dog that i am a pack leader so you do the training there then you get your dog to sit next to you on the couch expect him to obey you why would he or he standing on the couch you are sitting so you have surrendered and then you tell him you don't bark you don't lick my face you are giving him body language to tell that i have surrendered to you so he takes the call on what to be done hmm. so the biggest challenge i have ever faced is to tell people or to make people understand it's the change in you that brings the change in the dog it's not that a dog can the dog can be trained to do miracles within with who he would do is very important So that's a challenge. 
Thank you. Thank you, Amrit sir. And we, we thank you for this wonderful episode. I, for one, as a dog lover, had so many eye-openers, so many things to learn from an expert like you. And I'm sure uh, you, you are going to do fantastic and going to inspire a lot of other dog owners to do the right things. And I genuinely request um, all the viewers watching that, you know, go check out uh, uh, Dog Guru Amrut's uh, handles on social media. We'll tag all of them. And I hope this episode has given you the takeaway you truly deserve. On that note, thank you so much, sir, one more time for coming on my show. You're most welcome. Pleasure is mine.